Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. I apologize for my lack of usual content, but what's happening in Syria is important, and maybe what defines the next 100 years. Trump has authorized the use of force against Syria in retaliation for the alleged use of chemical weapons by the Assad regime in the suburb of Ghouta, where 42 people were reported to have been killed. How do we know this happened? The White Helmets! a non-governmental organization paid for by Western powers whose members have been embedded with the jihadist Syrian rebel groups and implicated in war crimes, who is lauded by the fake news media for the humanitarian efforts that are completely fabricated. Here's a picture of a man being pulled from debris after a bomb went off who's well enough to take a selfie. Here's some wonderful humanitarians photographed on the battlefield with guns. I'll let this picture speak for itself. But don't take my word for it. What did the Syrian people think about these great humanitarians? With white helmets. They're called the white helmets or the civil defense helping people when they were injured. When they came to help the injured, they stole from them. If people were wearing jewelry, they cut it off. All of them are thieves. Oh dear. This man accused the organization of intentionally killing his little girl. I took her to the civil defense hospital and they gave her an injection filled with air to kill her. They don't help people. They only work when there is a camera on them and when the camera is gone, they leave. They abandon people under the rubble. They told us to pull the bodies out by ourselves. Well, what do they know? They're probably Russian bots. How are they funded anyhow? Oh, right. USAID, which is the United States State Department, supplied $23 million to this group and contracted $339.6 million to the consulting firm Chemonix International to supply the White Helmets as part of supporting activities that pursue a peaceful transition to the democratic and stable Syria. This in addition to the $1 billion the CIA put in to train and arm Syrian rebels. Chemonix International gained notoriety for squandering its $53 million contract to rebuild and clear the rubble following the 2010 Haitian earthquake. Oh look, here's the White Helmets rescuing the same child three times. Honestly, can't even give him a new shirt? So let's review here. The White Helmets are an organization funded by the State Department with militant jihadists in its rank regarded as thieves by locals and has been caught staging rescues numerous times. They sound completely honest and trustworthy, don't they? Of course not. But that didn't stop the State Department from saying that they have proof that Assad used chemical weapons. What's the proof? They, uh, they can't say, but I'm sure it's wonderful. France also has indisputable proof that the Assad regime used chemical weapons. Their proof? Pictures on social media. Now what does Russia have to say about this? Take it away, Russian ambassador to the European Union, Vladimir Chizov. Russia, let me correct you, is also shocked by yet another provocation of this so-called chemical attack in Duma, eastern Ghouta, near Damascus. Russian military specialists have visited the region, walked on those streets, entered those houses, talked to local doctors, and visited the only functioning hospital in Duma, including its basement, where reportedly the mountains of corpses pile up. Oh, I bet there were so many bodies. All of the bodies. There wasn't a single corpse and not a single person who came in for treatment after the attack. But we've seen them on the video. There was no chemical attack in Duma, pure and simple. Oh. Oh, I see. We have two conflicting narratives here. One is absolutely certain that a chemical attack was carried out by the Syrian government, while the other is skeptical. But here's the thing, in April 2017, a similar gas attack occurred which was used to justify a Tomahawk missile strike on Shiret Air Base in Syria. On February 2018, Secretary of Defense James Mattis admitted that there is no evidence such an attack was carried out by the Syrian government. Furthermore, let's just check out the timing. Syria is in civil war. Assad is on the cusp of victory. What reason would he have to bring global condemnation now? Conventional warfare is working, and the timing makes no sense whatsoever. Unless you argue that the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad is insane and acting randomly, that it makes no sense. But even if he is insane and acting randomly, that only means that he's just as likely to use chemical weapons 
as he is to declare war on the Atlantic Ocean. So despite all that, the U.S. went ahead and sent missiles anyhow. At 9.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, April 13th, 2018, Damascus was rocked by explosions as missiles were fired and some were shot down by anti-aircraft fire. According to Syrian sources, 73 of the 103 missiles that were fired were shot down. At 9.40, French President Emmanuel Macron announced joint French and British operations in the region against the Syrian government, as to them there is no doubt about Assad's responsibility in the chemical attack in Ghouta that may not have even happened. Mattis said at 10 o'clock that Assad did not get the message after the chemical attack in 2017, even though he admitted that there was no evidence it was Assad's government that did it in April 2017. He's asking for responsible nations to join the condemnation. At the time of this recording, things are still developing. Will Russia follow through on its promise to attack the missile sites? A Russian Navy officer floated the idea of torpedoing one of the U.S. Navy's destroyers to send a message. Did Russia help shoot down some of the missiles? Only time will tell. How they will respond, I cannot say. But the Russian ambassador to the U.S. has clearly stated that they are being threatened. But war can be averted if Russia doesn't retaliate, which, to all honesty, they are perfectly justified to. Huh, what an odd feeling to be rooting for Russia against the United States. Even if they don't retaliate, this attack is a clear escalation from last year, which only one target was hit. This time, it's several targets with hundreds of missiles. This attack also happens on the morning of the day when the Organization for Prohibition on Chemical Weapons was set to investigate the chemical attack site for proof of the attack's occurrence. Interesting. The United States, France, and Britain acting before they have all the facts. Why the haste to act? Because they already have all the facts. Trump knows. Mattis knows exactly what he's doing. They know these attacks were staged. They know the White Helmets are Al-Qaeda, but that's okay. This was clearly a false flag. This was a false flag, and the West knows it was a false flag. The rebels were losing, and ISIS needed the United States to be their air force against the Assad regime. The deep state needs their gas pipeline from Turkey through Syria and into Europe. That's all this entire proxy war has been about. My fellow Americans, your taxes have gone to fund ISIS because they want to build a pipe. And all the people, the innocents, the people who had nothing to do with this war, their blood is on Trump's hands. Trump and all the rest of the monsters in our psychotic cacocracy. Screw them. Screw them all. Screw our military for following these indefensible orders. Screw the priesthood of statism in Congress who applauds this. And screw you, neocons and statists. Your, my country, right or wrong mentality is going to get people killed because of lies. If countries are allowed to attack each other for humanitarian reasons, then Russia should bomb the U.S. for the government's actions in Waco, Texas. Or attack the U.K. for the rampant Muslim rape gangs the government refuses to prosecute. If Russia retaliates, the United States will hit back even harder. Then Russia will retaliate, and this will go into an endless cycle of continually escalating attacks and skirmishes. Congratulations, World War III begins. Everything that happens now, the grief of every mother who loses their son, every child atomized by a missile into a shadow onto the wall, it's on you, Trump. Deep State, Congress, status enablers, reap your bloody harvest of the innocent for now. Your time of reckoning approaches. Oh yes, even in the darkness of a looming confrontation between superpowers, a ray of hope shines bright. Well... Hope, depending on your point of view. China is launching a gold-backed currency to exchange in oil with to compete with the petrodollar. Ooh, petrodollars. Gold-backed exchanged. This sounds really complicated. I can promise you it's actually quite simple, as long as you understand supply and demand. The supply of dollars in the world is huge. I mean, really huge. But because oil is exchanged in dollars around the world... Demand for dollars keeps the price of dollars stable. This is what is known as the petrodollar. China imports more oil than anyone else in the world, so they create a lot of demand for the petrodollar. 
they're soon going to be buying oil in their own currency, not the dollar. This will drive down demand for dollar worldwide, but the supply is the same. Therefore, the price of dollars will decrease. Now, what does this mean? Inflation. Hyperinflation, as in $1,000 for a Hershey's bar inflation. Two things will happen from this. The state won't be able to finance its pointless war with worthless dollars, and the price of cryptocurrency and gold will skyrocket. Because it's the only currency with any value, people in the United States will exchange in crypto. Blockchain technology that all cryptocurrencies are based on means that all transactions are encrypted. The state can't track who's paying for what and how much. Ergo, it is impossible for them to tax or regulate. They'll try to tax, but because they don't know who's transacting when, they, they can't. As far as the IRS is concerned, everyone who uses crypto exclusively has an income of zero. They'll try to print money, but that'll just exacerbate the problem. They'll try to revalue the currency, but by then, it'll already be too late. So what happens when the government is unable to finance its pointless wars and everyone trains in crypto for the services that were previously provided by the state's monopoly? Freedom. At no point in history has anyone been freer than we shall be once the state is innovated out of existence. The state will die the same way it lived, stealing and murdering. This transition is by no means smooth, and I wish the people of Syria all the best while our self-appointed leaders burn their homes to ash. The statists will fight. They will squirm, but they delay the inevitable. We cannot lose. Now, how do I know all this will happen? Because the government told me so through their own actions. Why was the secular government in Libya toppled? Because Gaddafi's a bad guy? No! Because they were getting ready to launch a gold-backed currency to compete with the petrodollar. If they're this concerned with a relatively small country like Libya doing this, imagine what'll happen when a freaking global superpower does it. The economic and political system as we know it is on a time limit, and the deep state knows it. They're going to do everything in their power to get this war going and use any justification for it. Why? Because it gives them an excuse to regulate and tax and mask the consequences of a mercantilist economy with a fiat monetary system. You see, your brothers, your sons, and you need to be maimed, slaughtered, and traumatized in the meat grinder of a pointless war. Your taxes need to skyrocket and the economy become a wartime command economy. It's for the greater good, you see. But their days are numbered. The clock is ticking until economic and political collapse, and I can't wait. So what can you do? The first thing you can do is get prepared. Stock up on non-perishable food, canned fruits and vegetables, cereal, freeze dry if you can, get bottled water, be aware that you'll need a gallon of water a day per person, buy silver coins and cryptocurrencies, most importantly, Find the people you can trust, who you know in person. Find your tribe and work together to plan this out. The fourth turning is going to be rough, but we need to ride out the storm so that we may behold the glorious rainbow out from the other side. For the first time in 7,000 years, we will be free. Questions, comments, critique? What are your plans for dodging the draft to fight in World War III? Is this all a do over nothing? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.